hello viewers welcome to my channel connect civilian so in this lecture we are going to design a continuous wd reinforced beam as per is code 456 2000 where the span length of the beam is less than 10 meter so we have already done the simply supported beam okay if you haven't checked that video please go and check i will put the link in the description or the end of this video okay and uh, here we are going to design a w reinforced beam okay with continuous span okay so this is the beam this is the continuous beam i have shown it here in the figure and these are the supports okay this is the section at the mid and this is the section at the support okay and these are all the values will come after the design so what is tear and what are die of the main bar you have to provide the mid and at the support it will be shown in this figure by this excel sheet okay so here in the blue boxes what you have to do you have to fill the initial values in all the blue boxes and it will design by itself in the black boxes all the calculated value will be shown and this is the bar that will be calculated will be shown in these two boxes for main bars and for stirrups this will be shown in this box okay so first we are going to design a uh, w uh, dead load calculation for the end span okay so first we are going to design the beam uh, mid of the end beam okay first we are going to design this end beam okay this will be your end beam and this will be your mid beam if uh, more than one beam will be there at the mid so this to this beam and this beam will be your end beam and these all are considered as the mid beam okay these two are considered as the mid beam if or uh, or the beam number is again increases so again the same procedure will be followed that is the end beam will be on the both uh, sides that is on the left and the right and all the mid beam that is coming is considered as the mid beams okay so first we are going to design the end beam so here first you have to calculate the mid span of the end beam so here we have to calculate the reinforcement for the mid span at the end beam here is the calculation for the dead load on the end beam okay so this value will you can calculate by here also or you can get the data if you have already calculated from any other software or excel sheet okay so you have both the options either you can calculate here or you can directly get the value and insert it okay so this is the height of the floor you have to provide that is coming above the beam okay so our value is 3.54 this will be okay this will be height of the floor and here we have to detect the beam depth that is coming above that floor okay so this will be our beam depth that is coming above the floor will be 0.4 that is 400 mm this will be also okay 0.4 is okay and our density of brick and density of uh, plaster you have to provide so density of brick is 10 and density of plaster is 22 so density of brick will depend what type of brick you are using if you are using the red bricks so it density may increase up to 20 and if you are using the light wave bricks so it density is decreased up to 10 so you, you have to check the density what block you are using okay and the thickness of the block work will be 150 so uh, the thickness we have to provide as 150 so mine is 150 in your case you can also increase or decrease if you want and the thickness of the plaster is 12 mm okay so here we are only considering the inner side plaster uh, thickness okay so you can also consider the inner and outer if you want okay oriented to 2 you have to add it as inner as 12 and for outer we consider it as up to 20 mm so this will be 32 okay for now we are going with 12 so our udl acting on beam is coming as 5.64 kN per meter now so this will be your dimension calculation for the end beam okay 
so thickness of bearing or column end support is so these two boxes what are these i will show you in figure so this two here you have to fill the width of this okay width of these two supports what is the width of this support and what is the width of this support so here you have to fill that okay we are going with zero right now okay so this width of the support will be your block work or the column width okay whatever it is coming you can use okay so if you want to take just take it as 300 okay for both the values or you can also go with zero okay in a my in my case i am considering this value as zero if you want to increase or if you want to show the width so you can go with whatever value the width is present of the column or the brick part okay so go i am going with 300 mm on both the sides that is on the left side it is 3 and the right side it is 300 mm okay so both the value will be seen here right now so this will first box will be your left and the second box will be your uh, right one okay and the clear span so this will be your clear span between two supports so this is 6 meter this is the clear span so here it is 6 right now so live load is 20 kN and dead load is 15 kN okay okay so here your dead load is 20 so i have already told you either you can use this 5.64 from this calculation or you can directly insert your calculated uh, previous values or you can get the value if you are design your whole structure in any software you can also get the value from there okay so you can insert whatever you want so dead load is i am going to consider it as 20 mm right now. sorry 20 kN per meter okay live load is 15 okay so you can consider the if any live load is coming on that okay okay so here what you have to do so this will be your live load uh, that is not fixed and this will be your dead plus live load that is fixed so dead plus live load value will be only this 5.64 that is calculation of your brick work that is coming on the uh, beam okay and uh, the live load may be that was not fixed due to channel or any movable stuff is coming on the beam so you have to mention that value okay if you have that value you can insert it either you can uh, take it as zero okay if your live load is not fixed that is movable in our case it is so we got the channel that is moving in and out so we got it as 20 kN per meter weight okay and this will be your that is calculated by dead load calculation of the, for the beam so this will be okay our fck is why we have used this value i will show you in moment calculation and our fck is will be created of the concrete so here we are going to take as m20 so and for fy main this fy main is our steel tensile strength for the main bar okay so here we have taken as 415 you can also come uh, go as per your requirement up to 500 or 550 whatever it is okay and fy shear is your reinforcement uh, tensile strength for shear stirrups stirrups okay so it is also 415 this will be okay here diameter of bar for compression zone okay so what will be the compression zone in the beam this top okay is the compression zone of the beam and this bottom is the tension zone okay 
so here you have to consider that tire of bar that you are using at the top okay so we have taken as 20 mm diameter of bar in tension zone that is at the bottom okay here so here we have considered same dia as 20 you can decrease or increase as per your requirement diameter of bar for shear reinforcement shear reinforcement is for state of this blue bar okay here we have considered it as 10 mm factor of safety we have considered up to 1.5 Okay, you are if you are go, uh, going to take the Excel sheet for higher building structure. So what you can do, you can increase the factor of safety as your uh, seismic uh, coefficient will also mostly affect the higher the high rise buildings. So you can uh, you can't insert your seismic values here, or you can do you can increase the factor of safety up to 2.5 for more safer structure. Okay. So here width of the beam. So here for initial consideration, we have to take the width of the beam by ourselves. So here we are going with 230 mm. Okay. What will be the width? This depth is your width. Okay. This will be your width. If you taking a uh, looking at the section 230. Okay. So whatever value you are changing here it, in diagram, it will automatically change. So L by 12 so for continuous beam condition will be 500. This will be okay. So use continuous. So you are going to use the continuous beam. Now span to effective depth ratio. So our span to effective depth ratio for continuous beam is coming as whatever it is. What is it is 26. Okay. Now. effective depth calculation so our effective depth that is coming right now it is 231 so we are going to take the effective depth more than this for the safer design if you are going with the same value it will not go into pass in bending moment calculation i know that so if you want to check you can go with 231 for the same value and here you will see it is going to pass or not we are going to for the higher values okay so we are going with 400 mm for the affected depth what will be the affected depth from top to the center of this bar okay this will be our effective depth okay so here we are considering the 50 mm so effective cover for tension will be taken as 50 and for compression we are taking as 50 okay So this will be your effective depth for compression and for tension it is from bottom to mid of this bar okay. So total depth of the beam is calculated as 450 and total self weight of the beam is take, uh, calculated as 2.59 total weight of the beam will be 28.23 after addition of these all these loads and ultimate load will be 42.35 that is it is multiplied by factor of safety and if you have all the values here that is if you have calculated already calculated the load okay so you can directly insert here okay just insert this value here okay so or you can directly go with the calculated values and here your bending moment will be calculated from this so it is going to use the your bending moment coefficient from cross 32.5.1 from IS code 456 2000 okay so whatever load is fixed that plus life it is going to use the coefficient from here and for imposed load that is not fixed that is live load that is not fixed it is going to use the coefficient 
so it is going to take the coefficient by itself okay or if you want to co change the coefficient okay you can directly change from here by adding the formula i also upload the uh, unprotected sheet so you can download it and change the formula according to you if you want I, okay so here it is coming as 145.04 kN meter the bending moment so design consider constant will be 2 into 20 over 5 that is stress in steel this will be okay axiom x is coming as 0 0.4 into 2 that is 192 bending moment and and your moment of resistance for balance action is 0 0.13 kbt square our d calculated is coming as that is effective depth calculator is coming by the bending moment is as 478 mm okay and our d that we have provided is effective depth here if you see we have provided 400 mm okay so what here we have to do, do we have to increase the effective depth in g32 or design the section as over input so in continuous beam you can't design your under as as a under reinforced section okay so you have to go with the over reinforced section or you have to what where what you have what is difference between over reinforced and under reinforced section here you have to provide the bar at the both at the top of the and the bottom in continuous beam so you have to design the beam as under in over reinforced section okay so this will be okay you have to design the beam as or info that is called the bar at the compression and tension zone okay this is simple you don't have to confuse okay and uh, your mu limit is coming as 1.4 it is less than your mu so our info section design is doubly reinforced beam okay so here compression zone reinforcement at the middle so this red box that will indicate you what you are going to design okay so here you have to design your own over reinforced section as doubly reinforced beam okay so doubly reinforced beam what you have to provide the bar in the tension and compression in both the zones and your compression reinforcement calculation at the middle so it will come here so middle here this will be your end beam and this will be your middle part okay so our stretch strain curve value will coming as 0 0.0026 design and stress in compression so you can check this from sp1612 okay or you can also use this table for that this value okay so here if you will see your uh, stress strain curve value is coming as 0 0.0026 so this will be your stress strain curve and if you are going to design this uh, cold form steel bar that is the uh, so we have to use the fy by 1.15 graph so this graph last graph okay and here our value is 0 0.0026 for stress strain curve so 0 0.0026 will come nearby here so if you go straight and match here and it will come nearby 0 0.80 and 0 0.85 in between these two values okay so here you have to use that value only okay so in our case our value is coming at 342 how you can do it so it is fy by 1.15 so if you are using this graph so it will 0 0.0026 say 0 0.0026 will come nearby here and will go straight and match the value 0 0.85 into fy so 0 0.85 into fy will be your steel for mean bars Okay, sorry 0 0.85 it is 0 0.85 so it will come nearby 352 okay 353 so you have to use this value okay 
or you if you have already calculated you can insert the value directly here okay for 2050 so if you if you if your calculated value will come more than this value so software is going to take this value make it this value as zero if you want okay if you don't have this value make it at zero and calculate by the formula 0.85 into fy okay this graph will match this okay 0.85 value will be coming as 853 this will be okay but right now we are going with our taken value that is coming at 0 0.42 okay this will be understood easily so here our area of steel required is coming at 365 and our ST minimum in beam is 188 and ST maximum in beam is 4140 okay so here if you see you can't provide the bar less than this so area of bar steel bar that is provided that is 20 mm is coming at 314 for main bars and area of bar for required is coming as one only so we have to provide more than one bars okay at least you have to provide the two bars okay So if, if bar is dia is greater than value is can you can decrease the bar if you want if you are going with uh, 16 mm dia of bar so here see the dia of the uh, number of bar increases here up to two this will be also you can do okay now area of bar provided is coming as 628 we have provided 628 mm area of bar so this two boxes you have to check either it is safe or if it is not safe you have to increase the bar or decrease the bar according to these boxes okay you have to check these two boxes are safe okay now we have to provide the bar in the tension zone for the end beam okay here so st1 is 875 we have already done this before from fp16 page number 12 you can check from there what is st1 and what is st st2 that is come on the given on page number 96 okay so st2 is 345 area of st is equal for tension that is for bottom bars is uh, 1221 so minimum will be 188 maximum is 4140 area of still by provider will be 314 number of bar required is coming as 4 so we are going with 4 this will be okay our value is coming so provide more values so we are going with number of bar as 6 you can go with 4 if you want okay and uh, again check what uh, all the value will be correct or not I am going with 6 for safer design so area of bar provided is coming as 1884 here we are going to design the beam as per seismic also but you have an increase the factor of safety that's why I am going with the more number of bars okay and here it is okay both the boxes showing you safe this will be safe for the design now steel bar for compression and tension zone will be shown here so you have to provide these parts at the mid of the end beam okay that is at the top two number of bar at 20 mm at the bottom six number of bar of 20 mm okay now our shear force at the end support so this will be same this will be our end support okay and this will at the mid this is our mid support so our factor here for value is coming as 10.64 maximum shear force that is occurring at support next to end support 
this will be our neck to end support this will be a support okay and our maximum shear force at the support is neck to end support is coming at 150 so shear force at interior support is coming at 145 so here it, this will be our, our interior supports okay so here what you have to do you have to take this table into consideration for the design and you can get this design shear strength value from table 19 is code 456 page 73 okay we have already done in simply supported singly and doubly reinforced beam how these values calculated you can check from there okay so our value we have already taken from the code so our value is coming as 0 0.88 here you can insert this value or it will take by itself also or you can directly insert from the formula okay so our shear reinforcement required is coming that is okay so we are going to take the 10 mm of diode bar already we have taken the diode bar of shear reinforcement at 10 and you have to provide here how many left stir up you are to going to provide so this will be our two one and two left okay you can go more for more leg stir up if you want if your design need it okay you can go four five six whatever required okay we are going here with two area of bar provided is calculated spacing is calculated minimum and maximum spacing will be here okay so we are going to provide the 10 mm diode bar of two legs at 300 mm of spacing so here you have, don't have to allow to go more than 300 mm of spacing okay so our this will be our stirrups at the middle okay here if you see 10 mm of 2 lakh at 300 at the mid okay so here we have better and this interpolation you can uh, uh, this table you can use if you want to interpolate any other values okay this table is free to use so our design is here completed for the end beam of mid span okay and this will be our deflection check okay so here we have done the main bar for mid and the shear stirrups okay and here you are if you want to do the deflection check also you can do from here okay percentage of tension reinforcement is coming at 2.048 our fs is 155.95 modification factor value so we can get from is code 456 this table okay if you want to check you can go from that also so this will be our it will be uh, given on is code 456 i will show you here okay so this table on page number 38 okay this table will help you to find the deflection check okay so our percentage of tension reinforcement is coming at 2.048 and our fs is 155.95 so 2.048 is coming nearby here okay okay 0 0.4 0 0.56 so it will come nearby here and our tension reinforcement for modification for fs value is 156 okay if you will go st straight we will see 156 will come between 145 and 190 so this will be the graph here it is coming 0.48 this value will be here somewhere so it will come uh, nearby Okay, 150 it is coming so 0 0.8 0 point okay sorry percentage of transfer transfer is 2.048 sorry so 2.048 so 2 will come here 
it will go straight here and it will match nearby here so our value will come between 1.1 okay so here we have taken 1.1 from the code and our ld provided is coming at 15.7 and our ld maximum is coming at 28 points in so this will be safe in deflection so we have already done uh, we have completed design for the end beam for the mid span and for the shear stirrup so this will be a calculation here and for the end span again you have to use the next table for the design of doubly reinforced at support of the end span okay so here you can calculate by the same method okay all the value will be taken similarly and this will help you to design the uh, uh, reinforcement at the supports of the end span okay that is the here and here if any changes is coming so it will be added here okay and this will be a cross section that will be shown here okay value will be same all you need to do you have to check all the value will be correct or not so your bending moment negative because it is acting towards upward at the support okay maximum negative bending moment occur at the support next to end support okay where is the maximum bending moment occurs so it will be taken from here similar procedure will be taken given for all the steps all you need to do you have to check the live load or any point load or load is coming is correct or not so value will be taken in the same procedure and this will be a shear force at the end support okay and this will be shear force at the interior support similarly for the uh, mid of the interior span you have to use this uh, table this sheets okay this will design your mid of the so these three beams if you see the figure this will be your mid okay of the interior beams okay this will be end of the interior beams this will be end beams this will be end beams and these are the interior beams so here you have to design the at mid of the interior span so this will be a mid of the interior span okay if load changes you have to just check the load that is you have taken the values okay and it will give you the all the calculated bars from the table from here in excel sheet all you need to do you have to just use the table and design step by step from this table at the support of the interior span and just write down all the values so it will be not be forgotten okay so here you can easily design your continuous beam and uh, w reinforced where the span is up to 10 meter i will also upload the excel sheet for the span greater than 10 meter you can also check for that also okay so if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel thank you